Welcome to EDA Playground Verilog Tutorials. My name is Victor. I'm the creator of EDA Playground. Today we're going to cover ports, specifically port declaration and connection. So we're going to start with the same example that we had before, our Ripple Carry Counter, and we're going to modify it a bit just to show you some examples of port usage. So first of all, a port, and this is a port list up here, connects multiple modules together. This is how a module talks to other modules and talks to the outside world like um, like your te test bench. So in this case you see that the port list here is Q clock reset and the way it talks to the outside world is it gets hooked up uh, when this module is instantiated. So this module toggle flip-flop is instantiated here and the ports get hooked up in order over here. So Q gets hooked up to uh, QRC RCC, clock gets hooked up to clock RCC, reset gets hooked up to reset RCC. So in this example, as you might have noticed, I've changed some of the names um, just to be clear exactly where these ports are, where these uh, signals are. So in toggle flip-flop we have Q clock reset, in the ripple carry counter we have QRCC, clock RCC, reset RCC, and similarly uh, we have similar name signals in our test bench. So first I'm going to cover a, a different way of um, declaration of the ports. So this is a classic way where you declare all the ports. This is a Verilog 95 way. And then you list all your outputs, outputs and inputs. And uh, by default the nets are, the, the ports are wires. And if one of them needs to hold a value, um, if an output needs to hold the value, it needs to be defined as a reg, additionally to uh, de defined as an output. So let's move on to the new uh, Verilog 2001 and later way of declaring. This is uh, called an NCC port declaration syntax. Uh, so we can do this. We can declare output reg and input clock and input reset right right when we declare the module. So if we do that we don't need this extra code down here. Now the reason I put that extra code in there originally was because I wanted it to work with some older simulators. But in this case we're only going to be playing with uh, Icarus Verilog. So let's see, I, I changed all this and let's see, uh, let's run it and see if it works. Okay, I run it and you can see in the test the counter is still working and there's another example you can see the the change names over here uh, let me go to a level deeper here are the names for the our RCC ports okay so this seems to be working um, so this is the recommended way of declaring ports so I recommend using that instead of the previous way next we're going to go into um, connecting ports. So as I mentioned before, uh, ports are connected basically in order of their declared. However, that is not the recommended way to connect ports because sometimes you may change the order of your port list or you may add insert new new ports, etc. And then you know your compile is going to fail or or maybe it's going to pass and later on you hit some corner case. Um, so recommended way to connect ports is to actually connect them by name. So I'm going to give an example over here uh, in our test where I connect the ports by name. So the, to connect the ports by name, we first do a dot and the port name, so in this case QRCC, and then you connect it to the relevant um, reg or wire in, in your upper level module. So I'm going to just connect all these up by name. Now you notice uh, at this point they're all in the same order as they were before, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually change the order just to make sure everything still stays connected. So I'm going to move the res reset over here, move through. basically I'm going to re reverse the order. I'm going to reverse the order and let's see if the counter still works. I'm going to change uh, the scope here. Um, all right, so I didn't like something. Right, I forgot a comma over here. Let's run it. 
Uh, still didn't like something. Extra comma over here. Okay, I'm messing around with my commas today. All right, as you can see, functioning correctly, counting up, counting, uh, getting reset. All right, so this is the recommended way to connect your ports. So next we're going to do a couple interesting things. So we're going to extend. Um, actually, before we get to that, let me show you something else. Instead of connecting to signals, you could connect your ports to constants. Sometimes, uh, you know, you have a simple design uh, or you want to... Um, you want to use this design for several things and you want to tie certain ports off. So just for an example, we're going to connect our reset to a constant. So we're going to hold this at reset forever. And you can just do that like that. Um, and just to demonstrate, it works. We can see from the waves that our Q is always held at uh, at zero. You can see this reset test toggling, but this reset test is the is the signal at the top level when you actually hook it up to this reset, reset RCC, that should stay at one and we can verify that by bringing it up. Um, I need to dump an extra level of hierarchy here. Um, as, you can, as you can see, reset RCC always stays at one over here. Alright, let's move on to uh, what I wanted to try out is I want to extend this ripple carry counter by one bit and I'm gonna do it a different way. A traditional way, the proper way would be to define an extra toggle flip-flop uh, over here and then you know increase increase our output by a bit. But I'm actually gonna extend it at a higher level. I'm gonna extend it over here. And this is possible in Verilog even though this is not the proper way to do it, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to create another toggle flip-flop. I'm going to increase our queue test width by a bit, and then I'm just going to hook it up at this level. And of course these are... Uh, I'm going to follow the proper syntax here, just to make sure I'm using good practices here. So this is going to be Q, Q test. This is going to be um, clock Q negative of Q test three, and this is going to be reset reset RCC. This looks correct so far. Um, the difference here is now Q test is five bits. So down here, I'm going to limit this to the first three bits. Okay, so we're running. Let's increase our test time. A bit because in the counter it's gonna count twice as much. All right, let's see if I uh, made it work. All right. Oh, I need to get the reset back. Reset test. Um, um, yeah, two. I'm gonna leave this as two. All right. Uh, we see our. 3 to 0 is still counting. Uh, 4 to 0 has an issue. Let me see if I can figure this out quickly. Now, of course, the issue was over here. I should have paid attention to this warning. Is we, you know, created a signal that wasn't declared. Uh, so in this case, this should have been reset test. And you know, it's common to make these kinds of mistakes, and that's part of the reason why we we want to test things out uh, before we actually manufacture the chip. Okay, and now uh, you see everything's working. Let me change this wave dump. Just just for clarity, I'm going to dump all the scopes. And then I'm going to go through the different levels. Alright, so the top level at our test, we had, we had these signals. And this is your typical counter, and now you can see it counts up beyond 15 and goes uh, keeps on going to 1F. I meant it, it counts up beyond F, so it's twice as long. It counts twice as much now. Um, at the next level we have RCC and you see TFF now is at the same level as the test. So let's, let me append that and let me append TFF3 just for examples. Uh, so you can see 
um, this queue is at, at at the level test test TFF4 and this queue is at the level test RCC TFF3 alright another thing I want to try just for experimentation is now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take TFF3 and I'm gonna pull it up to the higher level and this is for example purposes just to show what kind of stuff you can do so I'm gonna pull it all up at a higher level and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna connect it up to the same signals they were connected at the lower level and this is something you can do in in Verilog and um, and this is for example purposes here so you see these signals are called reset RCC which previously didn't work for me because uh, there was no no such signal defined here but we do have a such signal defined at the lower level so we can what we can do is we can use the dot syntax so we know this QRCC exists in the ripple carry counter and to get the ripple carry counter we go through the module RCC so what we can do is we can do RCC dot here to get down to that signal and this is actually going to connect the signals at the lower level even though this module exists at the higher level so in effect you're you're kind of borrowing down through the hierarchy and you can do this with any signal basically in Verilog any signal in the hierarchy is visible all you have to do is you know use this dot prefix and and, and fill out the complete hierarchy to get to it all right, so I modified this. Let's run it again. And let's see what happens. As you can see, TFF3 and TFF4 now are at, at the higher level of hierarchy up to the test. So I'm going to append TFF4. I'm going to append TFF2. And you see everything. And just to make sure it's working, I'm going to append these signals as well, just to make sure we're, we're counting correctly. All right, so this is uh, TFF3. And see it's at the test level of hierarchy and the other one TFF2 is at the RCC level. Alright, thank you for listening. This concludes our tutorial on port declaration and connection.